All right, we're going to continue the guitar progress uh, playlist here. And, okay, let me show you what we got here. This is a 15-inch speaker cabinet. Uh, when I, 22 years ago, when I was playing bass in that band, this is what I was using for my speaker. I had an old, old amp head up top and this was the speaker cabinet. This may have actually been two 15s. I don't remember if I chopped this up or if I bought it chopped. I don't remember if I bought a one 15 inch uh, cabinet, but this was originally a two. The way it's been chopped, somebody's chopped it here and it very well could have been me. I might have done that. Uh, who knows? But now it's one 15 inch cabinet, very solid, very heavy. Looks like it's made out of about three quarter inch plywood. Could be one inch, let me check. That looks like three quarter inch, but it's old and it's heavy. It is ported at the bottom, so it's not a sealed, sealed box. Um, here's the top. I'm not sure what happened. There was a piece that went inside. This went inside somehow. Here comes my helper being noisy. So it's got some nice handles on the back. These here are nice handles. Yeah. All right, so where was I? Thinking about, okay, so I have to come up with some kind of amp speaker setup. Do I buy a speaker amp combo, new one? Or do I try to refurb this cabinet and speaker and buy a either new amp head or used amp head? So we gotta process that. But first off, I'm gonna see how good or how bad this speaker sounds. So here's the cabinet. Uh, this jack is on the inside, standard guitar jack. I gotta figure out how to wire it up. Which one's, it's got three lugs on here. Which one's positive, which one's negative. I've already determined it, but I'm gonna show you what I did to determine that. So this goes on the back and then you run wires from it to your speaker. All right, so there's that. I gotta wire that from the speaker. Here is the old speaker. It's pretty heavy. It's a 15 inch. It's definitely old. The only writing I could find on it. Right there. And there briefly, faintly, right there is a date. You can barely see it. Now then the date either says 1973 or 1975 or 1979, somewhere along there. So this is a very old speaker and it does have a separating here. I don't know if I can get that on camera. Right here. You can see it's separating. So I got some speaker glue off of Amazon. We're gonna try to Fix the speaker up, see how it sounds. If it's salvageable, why not use it? All right? Now then, I already know which side is positive and which side is negative. I already tested that, but I'm gonna show you how to test that while we're in here anyway. I'm gonna get rid of these old wires off of here. All right, so here's how you test a speaker. Which tab is positive and which tab is negative. Okay, you got your nine volt battery. You've got negative post, 
and you've got a positive post. Take these posts, hook them to your battery, touch your two tabs with this 9 volt See that on camera? All right, so this positive is over here. That means you're good. This means your positive is over here. Negative is over here. If you positively engaging, the speaker will pop out. If you got it backwards, your speaker's gonna come down. So, that means this left side, this positive terminal, goes to this left terminal over here. Because that's what's making my speaker pop up and out. All right, now we've got our jack. I've got three studs on here. Now then, I had to go on the internet and see which one of these was ground and which one was positive. The tab that hooks to this metal, to this inner circle, is your negative. This one here is negative, and it's the one that goes to the piece that touches the middle. Then you've got this jack up here, this little hook, that's your positive. That being said, you got two tabs on the side, I didn't know which one I could use. But I figured it out with my... Uh, meter here just checking for continuity so I put one side on this jack which we know is the positive side let's go ahead and go to the ground which we know won't work so there's your ground it's not doing anything let's go to this next one So that's a good one. Let's go to this next one. That's a good one. So I can use either one of those tabs there. I guess it's got two tabs if you maybe have two sets of speakers, but we only have one speaker, so we can just run the one wire. Pick which one we want and just run it from there. Alright, so I lied to you. I'm trying to get all in the camera. This spot is kind of tight. I lied to you. We soldered in that jack. Remember the one in the middle was the negative post, we'll call it. And then we had the other two, and they showed... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Continuity, continuity across the two of them on the ohm reader so I'm a little bit confused here I thought I could use either one turns out you can only use one and not the other so I soldered my wire from the speaker to that uh, jack and it turns out that I picked the wrong one 
So when I took my meter, from the speaker to this portion, the very end of the jack, I wasn't getting a, uh, I wasn't getting continuity. So even though those two tabs on the actual jack had continuity between the two of them, you have to pick the right one to go to the cable. So I cut that off, resoldered it to do the other tab, and hooked it all back up again. And then when I checked continuity from the speaker terminal back all the way through to the wire, I had continuity. So that means I had, so if I check continuity from one speaker tab to the other, I should have continuity on this section and this section. Hooked it all back together, plugged it up, and it worked. First time I plugged it into this external power, it didn't work. I was like, oh man, I just did all that for nothing. But redid that and now it works. So now we've got this Squire BP15 running this external uh, 15 inch speaker, okay? Which I still haven't glued. I need to glue it, but I, I'm just checking it out. Uh, I can say this thing gets loud, but I'm scared to crank it all the way up. I don't want to blow the speaker on the actual amp. This one here I'm not really worried about, uh, but this thing gets pretty dab gum loud okay now then as far as using this I don't know if I'm going to use this um, if you got a used head amp it might be okay it might be worth it but uh, looking at all the places I'm checking getting a, a newer head amp is expensive you might as well get the whole combo unit, the, the amp with the speaker in it. It's almost the same price, if not almost more. I don't understand that. I figured it'd be cheaper just to buy a head, head amp unit and run it with an existing cabinet, but that's not necessarily the case. Like I said, if you're using running used gear, this would probably be a good route to go. But on the budget I'm looking at, you might as well just buy the uh, combo. It's going to be the same price, if not even cheaper. That's kind of weird. I don't understand that. But I'm not a musician, so I, I don't know how all that works. But just for the heck of it, let's hook it up so you can see. This is the amplifier. It says eight eight ohms, fifteen watts external speaker. Before I do this, I'm going to show you the battery thing once more. I don't know if you can see the speaker real well. But once again, well, no, I'm not going to do that. Never mind. Uh, I'm trying to figure out what's my volume on. So I've only got this thing on like two out of ten. I'm going to crank this all the way up. That is almost too loud for in here. Of course I don't have any distortion. I'll go ahead and crank this up about halfway. So that gets pretty loud. So that'll work for this. 
but I think when it comes time to get a new amp I'm just gonna get a larger amp combo unit.